Okay, so this cheese I'm making today is called Belper Noll. It is a cheese that comes from Belp, Switzerland. Belper Noll is considered like the truffle of cheeses. It is like a truffle because it is small. I've never had truffles, I have no idea. But it is like a small ball of cheese and it has black pepper on the outside and it's garlicky on the inside. So it has like this pungent, sharp, spicy, hot taste. It's like packs a punch of flavor. And the longer it's aged, the harder it gets. And then you can take this cheese and grate it over your food, grate it over your pasta or your eggs, or add it to your soups or your salads or whatever you want. And it lasts for forever. You can eat it fresh, like just at a couple weeks after you've made it, or you can wait years. I have some in the fridge from years old that I kind of forgot about it. It's glorious. It's so glorious. I made really small balls, but you can make big balls, whatever size balls you want. I'd set everything up before I had gone to kickboxing. Smells vinegary. I cleaned it out earlier. I think it's fine. We're gonna say it's fine. Oh, what a splashy mess. I'm gonna turn this on, clean up the milk on the floor. If I make a mess, whatever I do. I'm gonna run out to the barn real quick and grab some more milk because I want to top this off. This is four gallons and I want all of it for this cheese. Got more milk. This one was from this morning and I don't need all of it, obviously. So I'm going to stir in some of the cream and add this to the pot. There we go. All right, I'm gonna heat this milk till it gets to be 86 degrees. Belper Noll is a lactic fermented cheese, which means that the cheese is primarily setting up because of the coagulation that is caused by the culture or the acid and not the rennet. There is rennet in it, but it is a very minimal amount. Some recipes call for using freeze-dried culture packets that have both the culture and the rennet in it, so you just do it at one time. Other recipes call for adding like Flora Danica, freeze-dried culture, and letting, stirring that in, and then adding just a few drops of rennet. I am going to be adding clabber culture, and then right afterwards adding some rennet. There's many different ways, but then what happens is you let the cheese sit out at room temperature, once it's come to 86 degrees, for 12 to 18 hours. And that's the process, that's where the acid is developing and fermenting, and that's where you get the curd, and that's why it's called a lactic fermented cheese. Hey, real quick, if you want to see what happens in my kitchen behind the scenes, then go to milkslinger.com to sign up for Splashed, my weekly newsletter. I'll see you there. So I'm using Claver Culture. It smells actually pretty buttery and cheesy and delicious. It's a quarter cup per gallon of milk, so I'm gonna use a cup. Shake it up. And the rest of this is like buttermilk that you can use in baking. 86. So I'm gonna add the clabber culture. It calls for six drops of rennet per gallon of milk. I'm gonna put it into here first and then pour it out. Let's see if I can do this. One, oh, I can't do it. That was a stream. Let's try again. It's a stream. That's okay, I'm gonna say it's six, 12, uh, math, math, 18 and 24. That looks like a half teaspoon. Whoa, I just splashed more. Just a wee little bit of rennet. I'm gonna add some water to it. Now you do realize if I did not add the rennet, just by adding the culture to this milk, it would eventually set up like clabber does. So I am assured that this pot will set up to be like clabber, but I do want it to be a little bit firmer and more solid, and that's the reason I'm adding the rennet. Actually, the reason I'm adding the rennet is that the recipe says to do so, but I'm just kind of taking it as assurance that this will be firm enough, coagulated enough for the cheese. Right now it is like 2.30 in the afternoon, so 12 hours would be in the middle of the night, like three o'clock. I'm gonna go till breakfast, which is about, you know, 18 hours. Then we will start draining it. Stay put. You can see it is set, boom, 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 but there's no way over top of it yet. Actually, there is way over top of it. You can see it shining. By tomorrow morning, the cheese should have sunken down in and should be totally covered by whey. Ooh, more whey. Heading to bed. Look at all that whey. It's pretty full and the curd is down under it. Let's check it. Oh yeah, look how firm that is. That's great. What I'm going to do is get the Belper Knoll curds into these cheesecloths. I'm going to hang them. So they're just sitting in bowls. I have two big bowls. Oh, it feels very firm. It feels quite hard, actually. It doesn't taste weird, but it's strong. Actually, I want to pour off some of this way. You got it? Go. Stop. I don't want it to fall in. I just wanted to get some off. Lift 
the rail up just a little bit. I don't want these to touch the bucket. These buckets aren't necessarily dirty, but they're not clean. I'm gonna let these drain till bedtime. You can see how the bags have shrunk considerably and there's golden whey in the bottom. The whole downstairs bedroom smells a little bit tangy. It's not a smell I like, but it's not bad either. There's the curd and it is drier on the outside and then it is a little bit wetter, just a little bit more whey in the middle. We taste it. It's just kind of like nothing, no weird flavors. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of salt to each of them. The reason I'm adding salt right now is because salt draws out the moisture and I want to release more of the whey out of this cheese. I'm just trying to take this outside part and kind of mash it in. The outside of the ball is drier, so you wanna get it broken up a little bit so more moisture can get out. Mm, it feels so good. It feels actually like cream cheese. It's a little bit chalkier than cream cheese, probably because it's not as high fat. It needs a lot more salt than this, I can just tell. I'm gonna put more salt in. And it doesn't even have to be that much salt. It could just be like a teaspoon and a teaspoon. It's just enough to get it to start drawing out the moisture. Already, this is kind of dry. You could probably shape it, but I'm gonna drain it longer. You wanna get the moisture out on the front end rather than on the back end. So, this has been salted. It's kind of bland and flavorless, but we are going to make it spicy hot and flavorful in a little bit. Because my buckets aren't that clean, because they're used for food compost all the time for the pigs, I'm getting out my kettle and I'm gonna strain it now into this because it's fat again and I don't want it to be touching the sides of the bucket. Oh, I'm falling over. You can see how much whey is in there, not very much, maybe a cup or two. So it's dry and crumbly, you can mash it together. So I'm gonna dump it into here. This is approximately three cloves per gallon of milk, but I think some people do six or even more, or even less. Like whatever you want, whatever level of heat you want. For the black pepper, you can either use store-bought, already ground, you can use peppercorns that you hand crack, you can toast the pepper, which is what I'm doing right here, which is entirely not necessary. It's just a little extra step. I wanted to try and see if that released more flavor. I'm probably gonna end up doing a mixture of black pepper that I toasted and crushed myself and store-bought because I'm not sure I'll have enough. The other thing is I just got Pink peppercorns. I think these would probably be very good on the outside of a cheese. I think this would be perhaps interesting. So I'm gonna grind up some of these and either mix them with the black pepper or do some all by themselves and just to see what this flavor is like. For those of you who don't know about pink peppercorn, I was one of these people up until like three days ago. It's not a seed, it is a berry and it is dried. They grow in clusters. They have a more floral taste. They also have a bite. So there's the berry and you crush it and the outside part comes off the pink part and where'd it go? There's the inside, which is more like a peppercorn. They say this goes really well with things like vanilla ice cream, creme brulee, cheese, I'm considering putting it inside of a Gouda. Shortbreads, quick breads, biscotti, like a decoration on a cake, just adds a nice note from what I've heard. Oh yeah, it smells very fruity. Isn't that pretty? Now's the fun part. I'm gonna put some of this cheese in here. And then here's the garlic. I'm gonna pulverize it in here and hopefully make a creamy paste that I add back to the cheese. They say that this garlic flavor dissipates and becomes less spicy over time. I think it's still spicy. It probably just becomes a little bit more mellow. Ooh, smells quite garlicky. It feels fairly smooth, but it's not creamy sauce. And oh, there is a bite, let me tell you. So adding the garlicky paste to the cheese. I'm gonna add more salt right off the bat because I know I'm gonna need more and I'm not gonna measure it. Let's say that's a tablespoon. See how that is. I don't taste any salt. I'm gonna do more. Another tablespoon or so. Taste it again. I still need more salt. Well, hang on. Yeah, and the garlic is very mild. Almost makes me wonder if I should add more garlic. I taste the salt now. Next up, I'm gonna shape these into balls. Last time I made them into small balls, like, I don't know, like golf ball size. This time I am going bigger because it's much less labor intensive if you do big ones. You don't have to spend so much time with little ones. This actually makes it go a bit. I thought I wasn't gonna have that much. All right, this is empty. They taste salty which I think is good. I may have oversalted it a little bit. These are considered extremely nutritious because of this clabber cultured raw milk thing that's infused with garlic and salt and then all this black pepper and it's aged. I mean, hello. I don't think it has too much garlic. It's very mild. So if you want enough garlic to blow your head off, I would do 
two heads of garlic. Go for it. This next step is to roll the balls in pepper. I have cheese mats or bamboo mats that I just got from Amazon, four or four pack, a cooling tray, and then a pan. These will not lose moisture in the sense that they will not drain, but you want air to get around them. So they need to be up and not sitting on a surface. You can see they're already getting a little flat on the bottom right there. That's why you want to get all the moisture out because otherwise they slump. So this is why we're going to be turning them a couple times a day. I'm curious about how this is going to be. It smells very berry-y. It's like a spicy, hot, fruity berry. Woohoo, pretty. I'm going to set some of this aside because as these age, they will grow some mold and I will have to scrape it off and add fresh. I'm going to mix one with both peppers. So there's a hybrid. I'm going to go back to focusing on black pepper for now. All right, down to the last one. I'm going to actually mix the variety here. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is where I have the balls. I'm actually going to get a fan because I want there to be air movement. It's on low. It's not hitting the bell per null directly. It's just moving the air. The window's open. This room is approximately 65 degrees. It'll drop soon because it's getting cooler outside. I'm going to come in and flip these every morning and evening. They should not be touching each other and they are right now. I'm not going to worry about that. They are going to shrink a little bit and as they get firmer, we'll get more separation between them. I'm going to rotate these. You can see they're getting a little bit flat there. I'm just turning them over on the other side. This is feeling damp and the whole room smells spicy. I am leaving these to touch each other because they're a little bit rolly. These are feeling quite dry. They're getting hard. They still have a little bit more to go. I can feel a little bit of a give. They are considerably drier and considerably smaller. So right now I'm cooking supper. I am making um, a sausage, oniony, peppery thing with pasta. So I'm going to crack open one of the bell pernols. I'm going to grab one of the small ones that's probably the most dry. Cut into it. It's soft. So it is still crumbly, but it is sliceable. Oh, and the taste is super garlicky, but not too garlicky. It's a little bit creamy. It's really yummy. Oh yeah, this stuff is ready to go. It's good. Yes, yeah, so these just kind of crumbles when you push it. It's cold in here, 49 degrees. At this point, I don't think it really matters about turning them that much because their shape is set. So I'm just kind of doing it more to check the cheeses and make sure there's not mold. Time to package up these Belper Knolls. We have been eating these. We have not tried the pink peppercorn yet. So we are going to try those right now and see what we think. This smells much more mild, much more... Um, Floral and fruity, but not overly pink peppercorny like I was afraid it would. So you can see how it's dry the whole way through and it feels chalky, but kind of soft too. And it's also crumbly, but it's sliceable. As this ages, this will almost like shatter as you cut it. So in the beginning stages, it's sliceable. <laughs> I think peppercorn is strong. I think it's good. It's sweet. There's almost like a roundedness to it that is fruity and almost like I'm thinking juice, which is the wrong thing, but like red raspberries or that explosion. It's not so sharp. It's more round and sweet. Sweet maybe, but it's totally different than the black pepper. Here, you want to try it? Peppery. But it's not peppery like a black pepper one. Here, let me get one out of the fridge. You can pair the two of them together. So now this, smells much sharper. This is completely savory. You get so much more from the garlic. You get the heat from the pepper. This does not have the same heat. This tastes like fruity sweetness. This tastes like peppery sharpness. You could put two or three in a bag if you wanted to. I'm doing one at a time just because it's easier to share them this way and they last for forever. When you're putting them in, make sure that the um, pepper doesn't get along the edge if you're going to vacuum seal these. This did not seal. Let's try this. Put it under here. And here we go. That's a tight seal. So a four gallon batch doesn't really make that much, except that these last for forever. They have a lot of flavor. It's more of an, an ingredient, a condiment than it is an actual cheese that you're going to slice up and just because it's so strong. Either put them in a fridge somewhere and keep them at fridge temps or put it in cheese cave and just let it keep going. It should be fine either way. Once you cut them open, just wrap them in plastic and put it in the fridge and use it up in the next several weeks or several months. At this point, woo! Woo! 
it's spicy. Oh, there's heat. It's garlic, it's sharp. It's also um, kind of chalky at this point, which sounds a little bit gross, but it's not gross, it's great. It almost dissolves like it's been freeze dried. I mean, you can't squeeze it and it crumbles, but when you grate it, it's like a powder almost, a seasoning, and it's really good.